be live in all the places that we're supposed to be live. Um, and good morning, everybody. I know that it's um, kind of a dreary day out. It's kind of dark. Um, and so I was even actually thinking about not going live right now. But I, a couple things have happened this past week that made me think maybe this would be beneficial to anybody who's an entrepreneur and struggling with sales. Okay. And so what I want to talk to you about is if your sales are feeling kind of salesy or icky in some way, it might be your brand. And this has come up with a number of clients. And even for myself recently, I wanted to share a story with you um, from the past two weeks where this has come up and how you can take something away from this in your own branding journey and sales journey. Um, so just some context for you guys, for me. Growing up, my family culture, my environment, um, even my, my circles that we associated in, uh, sales was always kind of perceived as this negative thing. And like, I always heard things like, oh, Brittany, don't listen to them. They're just going to sell, sell you on something. Or, oh, that's just an infomercial. Like, you know, you don't need that thing. It's just, you know, it's all hype. It's all blown up. Um, you know, it's just marketing, you know. And, you know, always to look at lens through this kind of, look at people through a lens of this very skeptical, like, everyone's trying to sell you on something. And so when I found myself in a position realizing like, if I didn't make sales, I wouldn't have a paycheck. There was this big hurdle that I felt like I had to overcome. And so um, if you know my story about how I got started in the online business space as a coach, as a brand strategist, it started with being a volunteer. It started with actually being a missionary in a foreign context and when we were doing that, we had to raise our own support. And so what I found was my husband and I, we really excelled at certain things when it came to relationships, when it came to marketing, when it came to communication, and we just really excelled in our support network. Others around us though, even though they had awesome missions, awesome messages, they really struggled to get momentum behind the thing that they were doing and they were effective in the work they were doing, they weren't effective in their marketing of it. Hopefully that distinction has been made clear. They were so good at what they did. They just weren't really good about tooting their own horn, really. Um, so when it came down to it, though, I was like, hey, here's some things that we've done. It could help you. Why don't you try implementing these systems, these steps to help you stay in better touch with your people? And, and people flourished. And it was a good thing. And then I discovered that people would pay you to do this for their businesses. And I was like, what? That changes everything. Like the whole game has changed here. So. When I found that out, I was initially really excited about it, but I started to have these feelings come up that were totally unexpected, completely unexpected, um, because who doesn't want to make money, right? Like money is great. It buys you things. It puts food in your mouth, like a roof over your head. But there was this stuff that came up because I was raised to believe that like servanthood is the highest form of leadership. It's akin to volunteerism. Like... I was raised to volunteer, to do things for free, to just do it because it's right. And so to receive money for doing something that was just right or for something that was so easy for me, it was like, oh my gosh, I'm taking advantage of these people. Like I, I'm, I must be doing something wrong. This is too easy. And then I was like, well, is there, is there something here for me to work on? So Personal development, if you don't know this, is a huge part of entrepreneurship. Like you cannot hide from yourself because if you don't deal with these things, you can only go so far and you will be limited by your belief system. And so if your beliefs are limited, your income is going to be limited, your impact is going to be limited. So just be prepared for that if you're stepping into entrepreneurship, if you're newer to this journey. Um, so some of this stuff was a little bit of confidence, like would, would people really pay me to do this thing? And some of it was competence. There was definitely room for me to grow in what I knew and what I had experience in. I think that we should be lifelong learners. So a lot of this stuff initially was confidence and competence. However, as I moved past this and I was like, yes, I can deliver. I have a skill set. I'm building on this skill set. I'm investing in myself. There was still this stuff that came up that was hard for me to both receive money and also to let go of it. And what I ended up being able to name it was, and maybe some of you will identify with this, let me know if you do, is a scarcity mindset. Meaning there's not enough to go around for me. There's not enough to go around for everybody at the table. So I have to really hold tightly onto what I have, whether that's your community or money or resources. 
you hold it like this and it, it ends up being like sand. When you hold on to sand really tightly, it sifts through your fingers and it creates all this anxiety, all this pressure. But if you hold sand with open hands and you hold it loosely, then it ends up just, just sitting there and it's op you're open to put more things in it and you're open to take things out of it. It's very easy when you hold on to things loosely. I'm preaching to one. You better believe I'm preaching this one. <laughs> so when I started to realize there's this scarcity stuff in me and it's not good, it's really icky. Um, and I realized that that was kind of part of what made the sales process. And I, can I just be honest with you guys? I hate the word sales, even to this day, even though I'm able to do it much more easily. I struggle with the word marketing and I struggle with the word sales. And so what I end up calling it because it feels better to me is visibility. Visibility is marketing. I got to get visible with what I do so that I can serve people and buy in. So getting people to buy in to my process, to buy in to my methods, to buy in to my services, it's just another form of sales. So if you hear me use those things interchangeably, that's what that means. Um, and sometimes for me mentally, that's what it took for me to be able to be okay with starting to get visible in a way that I had never done before. So, um, but here's a secret that really helped make sales a whole lot easier for me. And hopefully this will help you as well, because if you're a heart centered person and I am a Jesus centered person, and if you have any type of moral compass or values that are driving you in your business, hopefully this will help you as well. It got to this point where I realized I am in business, not just to make money right? Some of, some people are in it just to make money and that is your prerogative, but others are in it to leave something bigger behind themselves. They want to make an impact. They want to leave a legacy. They're laying foundations for others to build on top of. And that is awesome. And that is where my heart resides. And I think that's where a lot of my clients are. I would say the majority of my clients are. Um, and so when I realized this, like I'm a legacy driven entrepreneur, I'm not a money driven entrepreneur. I'm a legacy driven entrepreneur. That's why I named my, my Facebook community legacy driven entrepreneurs. Um, but I came to this point where I realized I have a moral obligation to share my message with people and my mission with people. One, because it's changed my own life for the positive. It's changed my clients' lives for the positive. And it, if it's done that for people thus far, I really kind of have a moral obligation to continue making a positive change in the circles and environments around me. And so I can enthusiastically, when I get on the phone with someone or on a video call with someone and they haven't decided yet to buy in to work with me, right? I can know and I can get super enthusiastic about the fact that I can support them without pressuring them. And that is two totally different things. And that has to do with the removal of scarcity as a mindset and also has to do with the fact that I'm very clear on my brand foundations. I'm clear on my brand message. I'm clear on my brand mission. I know exactly who I help, why I help them, how I help them, my top differentiators, right? The things that set me apart from people in my industry, how I do things differently, how I work with people differently. And if those things are aligned, with their values and it resonates with them, the buy-in becomes very easy. Yes, I want to work with Brittany or I want to work with whoever. So then the, the last obstacle becomes price point or money. And the cool thing is that money is a renewable resource, right? You can make it, you can let go of it. It's just a thing, right? Time is much less renewable. Um, I think things can be redeemed with time, but um, ultimately money is a renewable resource and time is not. And so people are more willing to find a way to get over this money obstacle than if they were, um, faced with a time obstacle. And so when that, when that is the case, then you can confidently say like, well, how can I help you, um, get the support that you need? Because it's very clear that we're a good fit and that this, this is support that you need. So then how do we overcome this? Are you available to put things on a credit card or are you available to sell your kitchen table or are you available to do payments or um, are you available to wait and get on my calendar a little bit later in the year, right? So there's different ways you can help people overcome things in a way that still feels good without pressuring in you. And you can ask them permission. Hey, you know, I would really like to work with you. Are you open to, to dialoguing about some ways we can make this happen? And if they say yes, then you can proceed. And that also removes a lot of the pressure from people feeling like Brittany's trying to push me into putting something in a credit card, which I've actually never, I've never invited someone to put something in a credit card. I 
I think I've always just offered payment plans. Um, or if it's not a good fit, then we don't move forward. But there was a time this week where, I guess probably two weeks ago, somebody asked me to reduce my prices. And I said, you know, I totally understand that this is an investment and that um, it's an important investment. And, and unfortunately, I am not able to wiggle on the price. However, I am totally happy to support people because I know, especially at the beginning of business, there's not, a lot of people are on a shoestring budget. It's a side hustle, right? I'm totally happy to do payments. And they said, okay, let me think about it. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to move forward, but we'll follow up with you. Awesome. Cool. I can totally lean back from this and say, you know what, if it's the right fit, they're going to come up with the money or they'll wait to work with me and they're going to be a dream client, but I can lean back confidently and competently because I'm very clear about what I'm willing to compromise on and what I'm not and who I can help and who that I can't. They ended up being able to move forward and actually apologize for asking me to, to reduce their prices. Um, and so that was a very interesting dynamic, but also had some opportunities for work to come on my plate and it had to do with photography, something that I still do a little bit on the side because that comes into branding and headshots. And, you know, if you're building out a brand identity portfolio, um, sometimes it's just part of it still, but I had, uh, someone ask if I was available to do family portraiture. That is something that I can do that I have done, but I said, you know what? I actually have a friend that is her thing let me point you to her because that's in her wheelhouse. And that is something that is going to distract me from my momentum in this lane. And, you know, it's just not the way I can best serve people. So I actually was able to turn down money, which I know for people getting started is so hard. It's so hard at the beginning to turn down things. And in fact, I typically encourage people to say yes because it's more for you to be able to figure out what is a good fit for you versus what is a good fit for like, like, let me see, let me back up and see if I can reframe this correctly. I encourage people to say yes to opportunities to figure out where it is that their strengths really lie. Um, and so doing things for a low price, I know some people will say like, you should never do anything below $50. Well, my first logo was $50 and I realized I really loved logo work, which is a, a niche within the design world, um, because it's this culmination of visual brand messaging. Um, and so I really, really enjoyed that. But there are other things that I discovered that were not a good fit for me. And I did them. I did them as one-offs. And I said, never again, I won't do that anymore. That was not great. I was able to, you know, deliver. I always deliver. But I realized, you know what, I didn't enjoy that, so I'm not going to offer that again. And there's a lot of freedom to do that when you're an entrepreneur and you're running your own business. Do I want to incorporate the service? Let's try it out with one client. You know what? That was terrible. Or you know what? I think I want to pivot and do just this. And a lot of times that's what happens with a lot of my clients is we're in this discovery phase and they realize I wasn't feeling good about what I was offering, so sales were really hard. And I wasn't, I wasn't able to connect with people. I wasn't growing my community. All this stuff comes up. And so once you're clear, again, on your brand message, on your brand values, on why you're doing what you're doing and who you can really help, making the sale doesn't feel icky anymore. And that doesn't mean that you're going to ever feel uncomfortable with sales again. There have been times where people have made me feel uncomfortable or pressured me to compromise on pricing. And, um, you know, you have to learn how to navigate sales and that is kind of its own animal. If that's not something you're naturally comfortable with doing, especially if maybe you're not comfortable with conflict or negotiating. Negotiating is a skill set. I've I bought books to listen to on how to negotiate better because it's not some. I'm not a highly competitive person. Um, and again, salesiness was kind of a negative thing um, for around me growing up. And so I had to kind of learn that it's not negative. It's just different. It's a skill set that I don't have, and I need to build out in my repertoire. So. I want you guys to take a minute and look at your brand message today. And I want you to ask yourself this specific question. Do I feel so strongly about my brand message to the point that I feel like I have a moral obligation to share because I know that I can help people and I would help people for free with this thing. But I know that like there's, there's 
different effects when people buy in to something, when they invest in something, they will take that information and actually do something with it versus somebody who can receive something for free. So I would like to know if sales around your branding, if, if this is making sense, first of all, and if branding is the area where you feel like sales is tripping you up, like maybe you don't feel really good about your offering because it's not tailored well, because you're not tailoring it to people that you would like to serve, you've actually accidentally tailored your package to somebody else, right? So taking a minute, looking at your brand message, how you've crafted your surfaces and your offers, making sure that they're aligned so that when you actually get into the buy-in process and you're having that dialogue with somebody and, and it starts to feel like you're trying to convince them to work with you, that's where it starts to feel like sideways. It starts to feel icky and it doesn't have to. I can't tell you how many conversations I've jumped on the phone for and have just done a lot of listening, first of all, and, and asking questions and, and making sure that I am a good fit for somebody. And when I do feel confident about that, I can say, I can absolutely help you with this. And this is the process that we'll go through. And this is the end result that you can expect. And talk about all the other details that are part of a sales call. But um, drop some comments below so that I can know what is resonating with you in this, in this chat this morning. Um, are, is it that you feel sales, salesy and icky for some other reason? Is it the negotiation part or overcoming objections? Or is it really um, your brand messaging is not super aligned? And so when you get into that call, things feel a little sideways and, and it's hard to figure out. Um, so that's, that's what I really want to help you guys overcome this week. If that is something that you are struggling with, I do offer the intensives. And so we can have a conversation around that and dialogue about what you offer and what happens in the sales calls if you're having them, but you're not able to close them or people aren't buying in. We'll talk about price points and value and worth and um, whether or not those things are also aligned with your services and your offerings. And that could be part of the puzzle. So really wanting to see you guys thrive and succeed this year um, and make sure that your brand feels good, that it's captivating, that it's compelling. And, um, and when it does, then you'll be able to convert clients or convert the curious into clients is what I like to say. So if this resonates with you, if you're needing some support around it, please comment, please reach out. Um, I'd love to support you in overcoming this next step in your entrepreneurial journey. That's it for today. Thank you guys so much for spending your time with me and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys.